So I've been producing music for several years now. However, I'm still no authority or expert on the subject whatsoever. Uh, I've made a ton of mistakes whenever it comes to like trying to make music uh, in the most efficient and effective way possible. Man, whenever you're on YouTube and you're trying to make a video, if you're not an expert on a subject, then you pretty much just get to share with people how you've messed up on a subject, so they don't do that. So that's what we're gonna do today. I wanna share with you guys some of the top mistakes that I've made whenever I've been teaching myself how to produce music. Whenever we classify mistakes, that's pretty much things that have uh, made me slower at producing music or have made me just produce um, less quality music in general. If you enjoyed the video, please do smash that like button. Also hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos from me in the future. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So ever since I've been producing music, I've done pretty much everything in the box. Not the best angle. But like I was saying, ever since I've been producing music, I've been doing pretty much everything in the box. So that means I haven't really recorded live drums or um, used any kind of outboard gear whatsoever. But the emphasis on that is really the live drums. Everything I've done has been with either um, Get Good Drums or Easy Drummer, Superior Drummer, anything like that. Whenever I first started producing music, Easy Drummer was pretty much the big thing that everyone was using. Specifically in the metal genre anyways, that's what I started producing was metal music. So everyone was using Easy Drummer, so that's kind of just what I picked up using. Um, and that had pretty much, up until recently, been, that had been really the only way that I had had any kind of drum sounds in any of my music whatsoever. And I found that using only those things kind of limited just the way I would do drum sounds. I mean, it would sound, not only would it sound like everyone else, but I was really limited to a traditional kick, snare, cymbals, and toms. And then the cymbals themselves, it's hard to get cymbals right in the box, period. But it's, the stuff just wouldn't sound as good as I wanted it to, and it wasn't necessarily the sound that I was looking for in my head. But that's because I'd quite literally put the the method to which I was making music in a box. Um, and what I've recently started doing is still technically in the box. However, instead of using Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer or Get Good Drums, instead of using virtual instruments like that, I've really taken up a habit of actually just dragging and dropping samples onto my Logic timeline. And so I've been making my drum sounds like that instead of with the virtual drums, uh, with the virtual instrument. I mean, it's just a completely different sound, but I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys in Logic. This next mistake that I've made, um, I've consistently made it just pretty much ever since I started making music. I um, mean, this may be kind of, I'm not gonna say controversial, but you may not necessarily agree with me on this. And that is really not branching out in either your knowledge of your instrument or in instruments in general. Ever since I've started producing music, um, I've tried to take up like piano a couple of times and I just haven't. And I really feel like not hold myself to that. I think not having a basic knowledge of um, a keyboard or a piano has really kind of hindered me specifically whenever it comes to finding like synth sounds or keyboard sounds. One sec. I've recently been using this uh, Novation Mini Nova synthesizer. So I enjoy going through this better than going through Logic's menus and stuff. However, not knowing what notes are on the keyboard or what notes to play on the keyboard, etc. That kind of stuff has kind of hindered me whenever it comes to doing making sounds with this and with playing keys. It makes me have to program stuff. It takes me longer to look for the notes. I'm um, in keys and synths and like all the sounds that you come from programming stuff with a keyboard is such a huge part of making music in the box in a home studio that I really think having a more extensive knowledge of the keyboard would be very, very beneficial for me whenever it comes to making music in the future. And this next one, I feel like is something that a lot of people suffer from uh, personally. I mean, especially in like the metal world, I don't see a ton of people talking about this. And I feel like maybe that's why I have a little bit of a uh, slow start in this area because I started in metal, but that is kind of just a, a pretty solid understanding of music theory. Really what it is that I have seen used more often in producing music um, that I'm not really super familiar with is the Nashville number system. So just, you know, the one, the two, three, four, five, six, etc., the minors. So knowing things, scales and being familiar with keys in the number system, that is like a super valuable tool whenever it comes to, to specifically producing music with other people. Whenever my band and I are at Graybox or any other studio we go to, I'm pretty much always communicating like, yeah, that's the one or that's the two minor or that's the six minor or minor, I hardly know her. That's pretty much, that's the limit of my contribution to that conversation because I don't understand that stuff as much as I wish I did. And I've personally wasted time in the studio looking for chords, looking for a part because I don't know I just don't know it off the top of my head because I don't know the, the music theory there. Whenever it comes to effectively producing music, I'm not gonna say that not knowing this stuff 
will super hinder the quality of your music. I mean, it may, but I'm not gonna say that creativity can't overcome this barrier. But when it comes to efficiently making music, not knowing music theory is kind of, it's a, it's a bit of a crutch for me, honestly. So that's something I wanna work on. And I think that's gonna go hand in hand with learning more about keyboard is uh, a general knowledge of music theory. So this next little piece of wisdom is something that I got from Cody at Graybox at our last time there. As a guitar player, like I've said earlier, my mind is always in like the mindset of guitar and like guitar parts. Um, and I, this may go back to me being in the metal world, but where like the guitar riff or the breakdown, the main part of the song is very guitar and drum heavy like you hear the guitar parts like you can't have a metal song without guitar parts basically um however the music i'm producing with my band otherlands is more it's kind of poppier kind of like singer songwriter stuff sometimes and like the guitar part isn't always what you need so here's a lesson that I've learned recently. I focus too much on the guitar part and not the guitar sounds. And that can go to anything. If you're focusing on trying to write a part for something rather than what kind of sound you can put there, you're really kind of limiting what, you're, what your mind is capable of thinking of at the moment. And not only that, you may actually end up overplaying. That's something I've done a ton, trying to figure out parts for a song. I'll end up overplaying when really it just needs, it just needs some kind of sound following the chords or doing inversions of the chords or doing a harmony of the chords. And so like, as far as gear goes for this, I have a Helix and that is awesome for just making guitar sounds because it's really easy and you have just pretty much an unlimited amount of effects that you can use to put, you know, reverb before the amp or after the amp or delays before or after, or just use fuzzes or octave pedals, whatever, etc. So that's gonna be something that I'm using way more often coming up, I think, is using my Helix to make sounds. Don't focus too much on the part, focus more on the sound that the song is needing. And so this next one is actually kind of hypocritical coming from this video on YouTube. But whenever it comes to producing music or mixing music or just anything, any kind of craft that you are that you're focusing on, it is way too easy to get caught up in watching YouTube tutorials or YouTube mix throughs or productions or playthroughs, video like it's this applies to everything. If you love playing video games, it's really easy to get caught up watching your favorite video gamer play on Twitch or you love producing music, it's really easy to get caught up watching your favorite producer mixer make some kind of song on some kind of education website. This is something that I've fallen victim to and I think it's healthy and it's good in certain amounts and doses, I think. If you spend way too much time on YouTube watching someone produce music, then it almost kind of seems like you're doing that yourself. You're kind of like producing music vicariously through that person, in my opinion. And like I said, as entertaining as that is and as informative as it can be at times, I think it can be a bit debilitating whenever it comes to making your own music because you're just spending a ton of time watching other people make music. And that's something that I've done a ton. It's something I do on YouTube. I watch people make YouTube videos and I watch people do tutorials on lighting and all this other kind of stuff. And instead of actually practicing and making it happen for myself, I watch other people do it. So, I mean, that's just kind of like a time killer right there. Um, a lot of these tutorials and production tips and techniques and stuff that you see, they really don't even apply to the project that you're working on. You may think they do, but they really don't. Music production and the songs that you're working with are so circumstantial to the sound that you're going for. And I mean, it's sometimes it's, it's healthy and it's beneficial to look at tips and stuff that may help you get to your goal sound. But if you're like, trying to copy a sound or a technique specifically from a video, I think you're gonna end up being kind of disappointed with the end result because it doesn't really fit into your project. Sit down for yourself, try to find your own sounds, try to do your own mixing techniques, and if you get caught on something, then go to the tutorials. Don't waste your time on YouTube watching other people make music. You go make music. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you've gotten some kind of value out of it just because you may not even know it, but you're doing some of these mistakes yourself. And just trust me, if you get too deep in the woods on some of these things, then you're pretty much just gonna like, I'm not gonna say completely ruin, but you're gonna hinder yourself from making great music almost every time. So just try to stay away from these things. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash the like button. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos from me in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.